All right, here's the not at all anticipated sequel to Why Twilight Sucks Some Major Fucking Ass. Now, I'm not going to have as nearly as much of an introduction as I had in the uh, last video, so all I'm going to say is this. If you do not wish to listen to the upcoming rant, please leave now. Let's talk for a moment about Stephanie Meyer. Now, I have a powerful urge to smack her upside the head with a rolled-up newspaper, shove her nose in between the pages of her precious books, and say in a firm, though assertive, voice, No! 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 Kind of like when your dog has an accident in the living room. Except, you know, I would never do that to a dog because, hey, at least they know it's shit. Now, I, uh, I'm about to go off a little bit more on Stephanie Meyer, and I, uh, I just have to clarify that I'm commenting on how she's presenting herself in interviews and her actions as a writer. I do not know Stephanie Meyer personally, and I, uh, I really don't care to. Let's look at some Stephanie Meyer quotes, shall we? So as you're writing, do you have a reader in mind? Me, always. I just never think about anything else when I'm writing. It's always about the story. And if I stop to think about what someone else would think about this section or how the people are going to respond to this one, I wouldn't be able to get a word on the page. Right. I, uh, I have a few issues with these statements. One, a potential audience should always be considered. The whole point of publishing a novel is to impart ideas and knowledge onto others. If you aren't bothering to even consider your audience, why are you writing to them? Seriously, why? Can, can anyone explain that at, at all? Anyone? Two, the fact that Stephanie Meyer wouldn't be able to get a word on the page if she thought doesn't bode well for someone attempting to qualify her books as good literature. Just saying. Do you have some sort of message about love that you're trying to get your readers to walk away with? Well, I never write messages. <laughs> Actually, you do, Meyer. You have a lot of messages in your books. And maybe if you thought, you might be able to pick up on some of them. But oh wait, thinking is scary. Since you don't read vampire novels or watch movies, what kinds of research on vampires do you do? Um, or did you do any before writing Twilight? Um... Because I was creating my own world, and I knew I was breaking all the rules, I, I didn't feel like I wanted to find out just how many I was breaking. <laughs> yeah, man, why would you want to respect the mythology you're using? I mean, why give a cyclops one eye? You could give it seven eyes, you know? And why not have a leprechaun that has a pig snout? Why not? I'll tell you why not, because there are rules. You people say that vampires don't exist. They exist within mythology. Within, it's a pre-established mythology. And if you're not going to bother to research what you're writing about, then don't write about it. Now, Stephanie Meyer has stated in various interviews that she views her characters as children. Characters are tools, not children. Which brings me to my next point. The fact that Bella and Edward get a free ride. Stephanie Meyer crosses the line between empathy and sympathy, and everything Bella and Edward have, they didn't do shit for. I mean, why do they even love each other? Well, Bella smells nice, and Edward can't read her mind. Of course, this is never explained. And Edward is pretty, and a Meyer pyre. Yes, it's a Meyer pyre. I'm, I'm not going to call them vampires, just because it hurts me too much. But, uh, I mean, I really can't blame Bella for not wanting to get to know Edward on a personal level, because when you get right down to it, Edward Cullen's a sparkly, melodramatic asshole. You are my life now. Get a hobby, kid. I mean, seriously. Even Robert Pattinson knows Edward's fucked up. It's weird. But girls always like, like, I mean, uh, being a guy, you know, you always just look at girls, it's like, what do you see in that guy with anybody? Like, virtually anyone. Nice guys, you know, nice guys come last. <laughs> I guess. You always get kind of weirdo. It's like, Edward, if, if Edward was not a fictional character, you just met him in, in reality, you know, he's one of those guys who'd be like an axe murderer. Yeah, he sneaks into your room at night yeah. and watches your sleep and yeah. stuff. And he's like ultra polite, really formal all the time. Like, oh, let me open the door, let me carry the bags. It's like literally, like, you can just tell he just freak out one day and shoot someone.